As you know, running is an amazing sport. It's great to just simply head out running on your own, but even better to share that experience with others. Or is it? I mean, I often like the idea of running with my friends, but they've also ruined a fair few of my runs in the past too. So here are eight ways to not annoy your friends on a run. First of all, we have the chatterbox. You know, that person that just chats constantly. Meanwhile, you're struggling and gasping for breath as they explain. Yesterday, I did this session and I held the exact pace the whole way. I'm really definitely on for a PB in my next race. So yeah, I'm still feeling really great today. I'm sorry if I'm just like going on the pace here. I'm just really enjoying running at the moment. And I'm, so yeah, I'm just loving running at the moment. I feel so good. And I just know that I'm like in this brilliant form. Can't wait to race. And yeah, I'm not sure if I told you, but I've got this half marathon coming up and I'm gonna nail it. And I might even just go on and do a marathon a few weeks after. I'm feeling that strong at the moment. And yeah, it's all just going to plan. And literally everything else about themselves. I mean, I'm not really sure what I expect them to do really, but some kind of appreciation that I'm not finding this quite as easy as them would be nice. All right, how about that person that sprints off ahead of you on the hills, waits for you at the top, and just as you crest that hill to join them and enjoy a similar rest to them, they go. Yeah, they just go. Hang on, mate, where was my rest? That is enough to destroy the best of friendships. And let's not forget Mr. or Mrs. Know-it-all. You thought you turned up to a nice social run, whereas Mr. or Mrs. Know-it-all obviously got a different memo. They've come ready and loaded with all their advice to impart onto you. Yeah, I don't know if you've realised, but when you're running, you overpronate, so your feet kind of roll in, and your shoulders, they're kind of up around your ears. If you relax them a little bit more, you find it that much easier to breathe. And um, on the hills, it's your glutes, they're just not quite firing. So do a bit of activation work, you'd, you'd find it a lot easier. Uh, thanks, but I think I just want to run. In cycling, we have the half wheeler, someone that's continually cycling half a wheel ahead of you. In running, well, I'm not really sure what we call it, but when someone is continually running slightly ahead of you all the time, it is infuriating. The problem is if you try to catch up with them and try to level up with them, well, they just speed up again to be ahead of you. You can't win. It makes for an incredibly stressful run. You probably end up running harder than you want to, and you have to look at their back the whole time. Now, similarly to the Farklick, the impolite runner also can't grasp the concept of waiting or simply being polite. This is the type of runner that would go through a gate, not hold that gate open and wait for you. They'd shut that gate. That means you've got to open it, close it, by which point you're a good 50 meters behind and then have to catch up. This also means they're the type of runner that simply won't wait for you full stop. They just simply can't grasp the concept of a group run and they think that it's every man for themselves. If you can't run at their average pace, then so be it. Well, I've got a bit of advice for you, mate. Just wait. Ah, let's not forget the ultra runner. This certain friend loves to sign you up to a long run, often without your knowledge. As you embark on a nice, relaxed and easy five kilometre jog with said friend, they decide to add on a short extra loop. This short extra loop doubles the run distance and 10 kilometers later you arrive home. Beware of these folk, they love to add on the extra kilometer or the extra loop, but don't be afraid to tell them that you don't find it quite as fun. How about the root snob? You know, that person that never seems satisfied with the route. Oh, you know that actually, if you go up there, it goes like around this hill and then it drops down and you've got this amazing view of the city. It's, it's really cool that way. Yep, if you suggest the route, they'll always have a number of alternative suggestions and tweaks to make. Or do this. Oh, I mean, this run is nice, but it is not comparable to this run I did in Chile. You could see the volcanoes and they even had snow on top of them on your right hand side. Then on the left, you had these beautiful clear lakes, the water. And finally, we have Mr. or Mrs. Sirius. All right, so this is a really key session. So you're up for it, yeah? You've got to be hitting four minutes 30. I mean, give or take a couple of seconds, but that's what every K has got to be on. I reckon you can nail this. This is going to be a great session. It's really important. You've just got to go for it. Yeah, I don't think they understand the concept of an easy run. Everything is serious, everything is planned, and everything 
is about performing. If the discussion isn't about today's run, it's about race results, competitors, training methods, you name it. Again, not the way to keep your friends on a run. Any of these seem familiar? Well, feel free to subtly tag or forward this video onto one of those friends and perhaps they'll politely get the hint. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do give it a like. And if you're not doing so already, make sure you give GTN a follow over on our social media channels or give us a little subscribe just down below.